up everyone this is Draco Evolv and today I'm going to be talking about what's going wrong at United, where's the problems lie, specifically in my opinion the stats around United's worst start in god knows how many years, uh, all these tactics, the players, the board, director of football, where we can improve etc etc. I have not been doing much content because I was sitting back and sucking it all in and let's face it we are in a bit of a hole. We are in a very bad hole. I have taken some notes whilst working, walking from work to actually discuss the problems that was going through my head and, um, you know, just to keep a bit of a structure. Um, so let's dive straight in. The problem started during the transfer window, right? We all know that. We all know we needed a midfielder at least, definitely another centre back a striker at least and nothing nothing happened yes we got Bissaka uh, and Harry Maguire kudos that we improved those two positions where we needed it but still felt that with the injuries to Rojo, Bay, now Smalling going out on loan we are very light although Tuan Zabi has impressed the last few games but whilst defensively yes we we have been losing you know we have been conceding I don't think that's where the problem lies the problem lies was when we let Herrera go we knew we needed a midfielder right you know, the likes of Bruno Fernandes was in the market, available. I think if we went for him, it would have been fantastic. And now, now you can see it. You, you can clearly see uh, roughly eight games in in the Premier League. You can clearly see where our problems lie. And we needed reinforcements. We, need a, we needed a creative midfielder. Another midfielder to add a bit of depth. We have people like Matic still, still lingering at the club. We have people like Mata still at the club. I don't understand why Matt has been given another contract extension. He does nothing for us, absolutely nothing for us. He's just a wasted <coughs> sub, first of all, if he starts. And Oli went on to say, because we didn't make any transfers, that he's going to put a lot more trust in the youngsters. Well, Oli, you know, where, where's, where the hell's the youngsters? Where are they? You know, I, I barely see any of these youngsters starting uh, in a Premier League game. And we can't do, surely we can't do any worse than the current batch of players. So why not just go out and play the youngsters? You got likes of James Garner, who's doing really well in, in the under 20s in, at the youth level. Okay, forget about him. Maybe he's not ready yet, but fair play. But what about Andrew, Angel Gomez, uh, Tai Chong, Mason Greenwood? These are youngsters ready to step in. Instead, we're relying on, clearly as it stands now, we're relying on uh, David, David James. I was going to say David uh, De Gea, but David James, we're absolutely relying on him, isn't it? It's, it's simple as that. He seems to be our saviour at, at the moment. Um, he's been our best player bar one Bissaka going forward, at least in my opinion, so far in the season. He's been the spark in our season. Why should a championship player at the age of 19, who has no experience in that level, come to United and be seen as the saviour? What happened to people like Rashford? What happened to people like uh, Lingard? Where, where are they stepping up? These two guys should be running the bollocks off, running the socks off. Because at the end of the day, these two guys are from the youth level. They should have a lot of United blood in them. And I'll get back to a bit of uh, Rashford and uh, everyone. Um, you know, Oli, I'm afraid, Oli, Oli, as much as I like him, you know, he will never lose my respect in terms of what he done for his playing career at United. But as a manager, as a manager, he's playing negative tactics. We're playing only one formation. You can clearly see, everyone can see, whether against Rochdale or Chelsea or whatever, we were playing one formation, which is a 4-2-3-1, with the two midfielders sitting deep as defensive midfielders. You got Pogba and McTominay most of the time. Pogba got Oli the job effectively. When Oli played that 4-3-3 system, Pogba went on a run, didn't he? He's got like 10 goals or some, some sort of crazy run when Oli had that big run before he got his contract. So suddenly, Oli's got his contract and he's now stepping back. You know, he's changed tactics. It's more slow. It's more defensive. There is literally no creativity. Zero creativity. Um, finishing is poor. Defending is average. You look at some of the games where we win the ball back. We, we go forward and then when we're what, 40, 50, 60 yards from their goal, 
we stop playing. There is no movement. Rashford is running around like a headless chicken. Sometimes doesn't even move. Martial is injured all the time again. Uh, Mata, <laughs> Andres Pereira. Oh, oh, let me get to Andres Pereira. Why is he playing on the right wing? He has his best moments in the center. So why are we putting him constantly on the right wing and accommodating Lingard as a number ten? Number ten for me is quite important. It links the defense. I mean midfield and the attack. You know, looks for creativity, passing, running late in the box, dribbling, opening up defensive. Lingard does none of that. He, if you see him play, he runs away from the ball more so than actually coming and wanting the ball and turning around and creating magic. That's the first problem. Second problem is you either have Lingard or or you have uh, Mata playing. Who's past it? Who's like 32, 33? I don't know what he is. He can't keep up with pace. He, he, he simply cannot. He gets fouled off the ball. He's got no strength. Such a nice guy. But we're holding on to these players. Players only said that some of these, most of these players in the begin, last end of last season that the attitude was not right. They will not be here. He will be successful here. And some of these players are not. And they're not going to be here. Well, the only two players that really left our club, apart from Smalling, I don't think Smalling was a problem. He was more of a, a, a crap player, uh, is, is Alexis Sanchez and Lukaku. You still got the same Mata, Matic, Lingard, the Rojo. They're all, they are all the proper Fred. They're still at the club. You just got rid of two players, man. And you're feeding us crap, <coughs> crap. What he came out and said, uh, ironically, he came out and said those quotes, uh, along with the, f um, you know, or oh, you'll be surprised how um, what players who wants to come to play for United, around the same time when everyone was getting th that period when everyone was getting their season ticket renewed. Now whether that was a PR stunt given by uh, you know orders from the boards, God knows, but sounds fishy to me, mate. Sounds fishy to me. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that's with the tactics. Go back to the four three three. Go back to the formation that got you the job. That got you the job. Like if I was United's um, you know director of football, we'll come to that. We'll come to Edward Woodard, director of football. If I was the director of football right now at United or Oli's boss, I will bring Oli back into the office and tell him, look, you've got the job playing attacking football with a four three three formation high intensity pressing and putting teams under constant pressure playing one defensive midfielder so why why suddenly you got the you got the contract and you suddenly decided to change why and i will be asking ollie exactly that like either you go back to that formation or you're gonna lose your job okay so now let's let's talk about talk about ed woodward and and uh, you know director of football Edward Woodward came out and said, we know, you know every club in the world, pretty much, even the championship clubs have a director of football. Edward Woodward, we all know, be a brilliant tactician in terms of commercial side of things and stay to that part. Don't come into footballing decisions because that's what he's doing at United. He is dropping United down the pecking order on a weekly basis. Each match day, we drop down and he is responsible for it. He's responsible for his investments, his recruitments and his managerial uh, hires. He needs to step back and give the job to a proper person who knows football. You got people like Van der Sar who knows the club. Look at what he's done at Ajax. Look at the project he's been working on. You're telling me that we don't, we don't have our across the world a director of football. It's that's false. That cannot happen. And he just wants complete control of the club and he's running the club on the ground he's he's earned there was reports going around that last season he he earned about millions in bonus because of united's financial situation and that's all he cares for that's all all these play um the boards uh care for they just want the pockets filled because at the end of the day united is a brand it, it is a commercial workhorse it is a powerhouse in terms of its stature and its name is selling abilities marketability and that's what these are people the, these these goons are doing you can say these thieves are doing you know they, they, they are thieves they are literally selling us uh, you know uh, putting oligan and social knowing that fans will not turn against him just to kind of shield them just to shield them because all he does do that he, he does shield the club and them and he takes all the brunt and but 
you know, murmurs are coming at the Oli out. I'm, I'm not sure about that just yet. I think I'll give him a few more games. I think if he doesn't improve, uh, th there will be problems. It's simple as that. There will be problems. Um, in terms of stats, so let, let's have a look at uh, stats here. So Solskjaer's win ratio since he started is 47.5%, which is the worst of any United manager since 1977. Okay. Let that sink in. We are above two points relegation zone. We have not won a away Premier League game since we beat Crystal Palace, I believe, in the 27th of February. Okay. The eight games that we've had gone without victory is our worst start since 1989. Short conversion is 8.2%. Fifth worst in the top flight. In terms of Liverpool, we have won only one of our past eight meetings. Five of them ended up in draws. Now the next match is a big one. You know it is against Liverpool. Um, I do believe that if we do get a manage to get a result out, out there, playing the right way, not 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 that dodgy, you know, playing that four two three one and nick a goal and defend and park the bat bus like a B Tech Mourinho or whatever you want to call it. But I do believe that. If we play an expansive football and attack Liverpool at home and we get a result, this could be a bit of a turning point, isn't it? You now imagine beating Liverpool, knocking them off the perch, uh, which is at the moment Liverpool is the best, clearly the best team in the Premier League, in, in one of the best in, the, in Europe. But if we beat them, I am sure, I am sure we will turn a corner. Injury crisis, you know, all he's got, uh, whatever tactics he's using in the training field, he's getting everybody injured. You know, you, you look at pressing, he talks about pressing and he, he said about uh, us not starting off as a, a uh, um, early in the, in, in the summer, in the preseason, you know, a lot of in high intensity, running, stamina, you know, strength, whatever you want to call it. But he doesn't understand. His tactics are clueless. Pressing is a team's game, you know. you got people like Rashford running 30 yards back alone. you got Mata running left, right, centre, Luke Shaw, oh my God. If he wants to learn pressing football, he should watch the likes of, say, Liverpool or, or Barcelona, where they pressed and they pressed collectively in zonal areas, not run around like a headless chicken, because these tactics are old tactics. You know, these tactics don't exist anymore. And I think Oli has a problem if he sticks to that tactic. It's as simple, it's as simple as that. We are in big, big problem. Look, Rashford came out with a tra uh, um, tweet today. He says, you can't hide in football and last few weeks simply haven't been good enough. As a United fan myself, that hurts and you deserve better. We know and we need to improve and that is our sole focus as a team and as a club. Well, Rashford, first of all, get off your high horse, mate, and start performing. There was a chance you missed in the last game where you went one-on-one -on -one and you scuffed it. You didn't even take a shot. You just shot the floor. You know, he thinks he's made it. He hasn't made it. He's gone backwards since his debut. He went backwards. And I don't think he's good enough to start for our club. I think we should bring in a proper striker and, you know, put him down the pecking order. It's as simple as, or, or, or play Mason Greenwood, who in all his mouth is, is the best finisher at the club. Playing the, play the best finisher at the club. Play him. Don't play the youth. Ten minutes to go. Five minutes to go. And that's the problem I'm having big time with Oli. His tactics, his selection, and then bringing on the youth five, ten minutes ago. Look, if you're not going to play the youth, just say it. Like, just say, I'm not going to play it. Now, don't say, oh, they're ready. They're ready for first team and they're ready to start. But then they're not nowhere to be seen. Just just play them, man. In terms of Oli, you know, I, um, I touched upon a little bit. Um, for me personally, Oli is still has to be in. I think if he, in the next two, three games, if he does not go back to the... F Formation and the tactic he used to get him the job in the first place, which is playing 4-3-3 attacking, attacking football with one CDM. Then, yeah, I think it's time for Oli to go. And I think we should kind of band together and let the board know, you know, you never know it will work. That Woodward, you know, yeah, fair enough, you want the club, you want to be in power, stay, that's fine, you know. But stay on the marketing side. Give us a director of football, someone who knows how... Someone who knows football, 
most important is someone who knows Manchester United. Let, get, let go of this feeling, these pundits, you know, look at Gary Neville, etc, etc. They're not even criticising the likes of Rashford, Lingard. Lingard hasn't scored or assisted the whole of 2019, by the way. Yeah, they're quick to jump on Martial. They're quick to jump on Pogba. They're quick to jump on, um, say, Mata even, or Andres Pereira. These guys have not been the worst players at the club. Look at Lingard. He's been so bad. And I think it's, it's, that's the problem we're having with these guys. They, they have the power. They have the voice because they're public figures, the legends of the club. But I reckon, for me personally, they, they don't want to say anything too negative because that's their friends. You know, all is their friend. You know, Rashford, I've trained them. I knew him as a kid. Or in the future, you know, if I say something really bad now, you'll be damaging and I might not get a paycheck out of United. Because they, they might, they might want to, you know, go into United and eventually uh, jump into the United bandwagon on, on some level at one point, I'm sure. And th that's the problem we're having at the moment. And they, they're not understanding. It's easy for them. They probably get uh, free, free passes to season tickets. We're the one that's playing for it and going up there, paying. These guys, being, being at United for uh, the age of whatever, they have free passes, being the legend of the clubs they are. I'm sure they'll have all the passes for the family, friends to attend games for free, etc, etc. They're earning you know, thousands and thousands a month doing what they do. Yet they can't even argue. Same way, you look at Roy Keane, he says it how he is. Look at Jamie Carragher, he says it how he, how he is. These guys will have, you know, know that they're not going to go into United. Joe Roy Keane will never come back into United, although I would love to have him as a coach in there. So they have no affiliation anymore. And they are able to say things that these pundits who are, who are too shit scared to say it. It's as simple as that. Watching David De Gea's interview after our last game against Newcastle was the tipping point for me. I've never seen David De Gea that upset. He didn't know what to say. You know, he said things clearly like um, we scored one goal in two games. He doesn't know what's going on. And I feel for him a lot. He deserves so much. He he he's the one that carried us a lot in the last God knows how many years. He had a chance to join Madrid. If he had joined Madrid, he would have won three Champions League at least, isn't it? And he's one player. I don't think he deserves any of that. I think he, he he's one player that I believe he he should go because we're in a free fall. We're in a relegation fight, man. I don't think we'll get relegated, you know. But one more or two more losses now till whatever. We are in a problem. We are in a big problem. And our next game is against Liverpool. You know, I have no hope, much hope, much like many of you guys. In our current state, with the injuries, the tactics, the, 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 the morale, I don't, I don't have no hope of us winning against a, a surging Liverpool who's won everything, sweeping teams apart. So we can almost discount that game, right? But we're gonna get. It doesn't mean that if you discount it, our tables form or, or the, the, our place in the table is gonna improve. It's not. It's simply not. But that's how I feel at the moment at the club. I think Oli is out of it of his depth with this current tactics. I think he was good when when he started off when he showed a lot of um, you know attack bravery. I think if he goes back to that, he'll give him a more of a chance. Of a success than having played what 10 11 games this season so far in all competitions definitely will give him more success i reckon and play the play the damn use the, the, don't don't shove words in our mouth that they're ready blah 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 play them if they're ready play them play them drop drop some of them drop rashford if you got the balls drop mata drop lingard <laughs> sorry drop matic if you got the balls drop her simple as that but anyways guys, I'll catch you guys in the next upload. Take care.